this real quick here though. So what I see here, this is not a cell. These are layers of cells end to end here. So it's end to end these layers forming a wall and this is of the alveoli in the lung or the small little air sacs in the lung. So these are all made up of simple squamous cells, layers of cells. You can see the nuclei in each one. So this is a cross section where it's just been cut and we can see this is where the air would be filling that air sac and this is the walls of the air sac. And if I look at just this layer here, um, you can see they're flattened cells. So think of squamous like squashed, flattened, flattened cells. So again, rapid diffusion of things across this tissue makes this in a very efficient tissue in the areas that it's located in. Stratified squamous, stratified means many layers of cells. So we're looking at a, a, a tissue that's made for protection. Look at how many layers we see here. So this cell is gonna protect against abrasion. So our skin is a really good example of a stratified squamous cell. Many layers that if you, you know, rub around on your, in your chair and on your clothes, you see a little fluffing off sometimes. That's what most of the dust in your house is, is sloughed off skin cells. But there, it's not damaged because there's many layers below it. So that's the stratified part of this. And again, it's an epithelial tissue is how we classify it. And all epithelial tissues either line an organ or cover an organ. They form either the inside or the outside. So it's the first tissue we see when we're going from the inside or outside of an organ. So in this case, it's on the outside, I'm making up our skin. And it lines all openings into the body. So if you look at the list on the right hand side for body location, it forms our skin. It lines our esophagus. So when you swallow a big bite of chunky pizza with crusty edges, it doesn't damage your esophagus because there's many layers below it. The anal canal and the vaginal canal as well, all uh, resistant to abrasion. And again, it's an epithelial tissue. Many layers of flattened cells. Again, that squamous description tells us that they're flattened cells. Simple columnar, how many layers of cells? One. One layer, one layer. And columnar means they're tall, column-shaped cells, or, or um, think of them as like um, columns, you know, tall, narrow. So simple columnar, where we find this is in the digestive tract because there's a lot of absorption and secretion occurring on in the digestive tract. So we have this simple layer of cells, but larger cells, because there's a lot of stuff going on inside those cells with digestion and secreting um, digestive hormones and digestive enzymes. So this is simple columnar. And again, a classic place we find this is in the digestive organs another epithelial tissue. And there's others listed in your chapter in chapter four, but um, we'll get to those as we study those particular organs. So these are the three common ones that we want you to know right now. So the simple columnar is described on page 120 of your textbook. The stratified squamous is page 122, and the simple squamous, like I said, was one, page 119. So these, these slides that you're looking at here are from your textbook. So those are the three epithelial tissues you need to know. Then we get into the connective tissues. And connective tissues are usually found underneath or on top of an epithelial tissue. So this is um, these layers, these tissues are often found next to one another. So they tend to fill up the whole slide because they're in the middle. They're not a, they're not a cover and line type of tissue. Um, we're going to find them next to another tissue. So this one is called a realer tissue. A realer tissue, this is described on page 129 of your textbook. <clears throat> so you can put a, like a little long E sound over that or make a big capital E so you know how to say this. A realer is how we say it. Or loose connective tissue. So if you want to call it loose connective tissue, you're welcome to do that as well. As long as it's listed in your lab packet, as an alternative name, you can use that name. So we find this is the body's packing peanuts. We find this around organs, underneath the skin. It's kind of this, uh, kind of, like I said, packing peanut tissue of the body that it absorbs and holds water. So when you feel puffy and your rings maybe are tight, 
Um, you look at your ankles and they're, you know, your socks kind of left an indent on your ankles. That's a realer tissue that's holding on to water underneath your skin. And the same thing occurs when you get dehydrated. If a person's eyes look really sunken in because they're dehydrated and their, you know, their skin is kind of loose, that's a realer tissue that has lost water. So there's a lot of collagen in a realer tissue. As we age, that collagen breaks down and then people get saggy, wrinkly skin. So the collagen in this slide here are the pink strands here. Though that's collagen. Now you don't need to know those details yet, so don't worry about knowing you know, what's in the tissue. Just know the name of the tissue right now. And these little black uh, cells, those are the nuclei of the fibroblasts that make the collagen. And then we see these elastic fibers too, which give it some you know, stretchiness. So when you sit down or wiggle around in your chair, your skin doesn't tear underneath because this areolar tissue has some movement to it, has some stretch. So when you look at this tissue, the way to identify it, when I was learning it, it almost looked like someone threw some hair on the microscope slide. You can see those dark elastic fibers. That's a good way to identify a real tissue. It's the only tissue that has those dark kind of stranded fibers of elastic fibers. So again, you can just say underneath the skin, packaged around organs, packaging around organs. Either one of those is an acceptable location that you could list. Adipose tissue is fat. This is what we find underneath the skin, in the breast, behind the eyes, um, uh, around the kidneys. We find this adipose or fat tissue. Underneath the skin is probably the easiest way to describe that. Um, the way to identify adipose tissue is you have big open looking cells because they're all filled with a big fat droplet. So there's a big fat droplet in the center of these cells and the nucleus is pushed up against the edge. So this is adipose tissue. Another way to think of it is almost like chicken wire. You know what chicken wire looks like. There's no space between each of the holes. It's just all large open cells. That's adipose tissue. Some people will confuse it with simple squamous tissue. But if I look at this, I do see open spaces. But are they rounded or uniform in shape? No. So these are air sacs of the lungs, and the simple squamous is found around the edges. Don't confuse simple squamous with adipose, because they're very different tissues. Here I, I see smooth edges. I don't see cells around the edges. I see one nucleus, and then this large cell with a big liquid fat oil droplet on the inside. That's adipose. Another connective tissue is dense, regular, collagenous. You can call it that, all three of those words, or you can just call it fibrous. If you'd rather just remember it as fibrous connective tissue, that's fine. So connective is the classification again. And where we find this is real easy is ligaments and tendons. Ligaments and tendons. So it attaches muscle to bone and bone to bone. Tendons attach muscle to bone, ligaments attach bone to bone. And as we age, these fibers, all collagen in the body as we age, breaks down and gets weaker. So uh, I'm a, just a recreational runner, and I can't tell you how many people I know that are my age, mid to upper 40s, that are training like they're in their 20s, and they're ripping their Achilles tendons, they're pulling muscles, they're doing permanent damage in their legs because they're running too long, too fast, on those aging ligaments and tendons. So as we age, if we want to stay active, which I'm trying to do, I really have to be careful to not overdo it or I'm going to pull something or rip something or damage something. My brother was goofing around with his daughters in the lake and was just pushing the water with his arm. And when he pushed the water too hard and not being in shape, he snapped his biceps tendon and his biceps rolled up into his shoulder. It was completely disconnected. So he had to go and get that repaired and get it screwed down to the bone again to get that biceps to reattach. So uh, middle-aged men are very much at risk, 40 and over, for these tendon tears. So we have to remember that we're not in our 20s. But a lot of you in here are in your 20s, so you've got a ways to, before you got to worry about, not everybody, but there's a couple of us that are in the second half of our life. Um, Next connective tissue is compact bone. This is a really, oh, you know what? Let me look at this and describe this a little bit. So how do you distinguish this tissue? 
If you look at the big thick collagen fibers, you can see they're all running in the same direction, aren't they? They're all going from left to right, kind of a wavy pattern of red collagen fibers. That's characteristic of dense regular collagenous. So those are all collagen fibers. They're all running in the same direction, which gives a lot of strength. So when you pull in that direction, as long as I'm pulling in the same direction that those ligaments are running, there's a lot of strength there. But now if a basketball player takes a quick twist on the basketball court and puts a lot of torque and force perpendicular to those fibers, that's when you see ligament tears. So, or if someone gets in football, it gets a blow to the side of the knee, right? That's when you see ligament tears because they're not strong perpendicular to those fibers. You have to have the strength and the tension in the same direction of those fibers. All right, the next connective tissue is compact bone. So the dense regular collagenous, that was on page 132 of your textbook. Compact bone is on page 136. And adipose is page 130. Yes. And areolar was page 129. So compact bone is, uh, forms the shaft of our long bones. So there's, this is the strongest tissue in the body. So if you think about our femur, the large bone in your upper leg or your thigh, very strong bone, it forms the shaft or the margins of our bones. And it's another type of connective tissue. And what's really unique about this um, particular tissue is you can see kind of the rounded, almost looks like a target. And those are the round layers of bone as it's laid down when it's made. And those dark centers are the inside portion of each little repeating unit in bone where a blood vessel and a nerve runs down. So blood has a, or I'm sorry, bone has a rich blood supply. And you know if you break a bone, it hurts like heck because it has a rich nerve supply as well. So it's very painful when a person has a, you know, a break in their bone, even if it's just a crack, which we call a what? What? What type of fracture causes cracks? Hairline fractures, brain stick, you know, um, stress fractures can sometimes just be minor cracks in bone. But anyway, um, this is a very this is the strongest tissue in the body. Look for the rounded kind of target appearance to this bone, and it's called compact bone. Make sure you say compact or osseous because there's different types of bone in the body. There's spongy bone that we're going to talk about when we get to the skeletal system. But for right now, just call this compact or osseous bone. Another type of connective tissue. Hyaline cartilage is another connective tissue. There's different types of cartilage. So for right now, you just have to know the most common one, which is hyaline cartilage. This is on page 134 of your textbook. This is a flexible cartilage. Like I said, it's the most common cartilage in the body. We find it at joints. It provides cushion at our joints. And if we, a person um, is, has lifelong obesity and they have that constant extra pressure on that hyaline cartilage between their joints, that's a number one cause of hip and knee replacements is carrying around extra weight on that skeleton. It wears out that cartilage. We also find it in the nose. We find it in the trachea the voice box or your larynx and the cartilages of your ribs. So as we breathe in and out, there's some flexibility there because of the hyaline cartilage. A way to look at this, to identify this from other tissues, is it looks like fisheye soup. Can you see kind of the, the nuclei of the cells that make the cartilage? And then there's this light purple kind of smooth matrix around it. That's hyaline cartilage. So there's a lot of flexibility because that light purple kind of smooth region of this tissue is that flexible, shiny cartilage you see, like if you're eating chicken and the chicken bone. Um, that's hyaline cartilage, fish eye soup. That's page 134. And then we get into muscle. Muscle is in, in its own category. If you look in your chart there, the classification is muscle. So it's not a connective tissue. It's a type of tissue we just call muscle. And there's three different types of muscle that we're going to learn about this semester. Right now, all you have to know is skeletal muscle. So these are attached to bones. So location, the answer is attached to bones. And you can tell skeletal muscle, it sometimes gets confused with 
uh, fibrous or dense, I'm not fibrous, um, dense regular, yeah it is, dense regular collagenous or fibrous tissue. But notice it has these vertical stripes that are kind of running up and down. That's characteristic of skeletal muscle. So look for the long cells running left to right, but also those vertical stripes running up and down. And they're very regular and have a very unique pattern. And that's unique to skeletal muscle. And that's on page 137. And then page 139 is nervous tissue. This is a very unique tissue in the sense we have these nerve fibers. See the large cells with the nuclei and then the long fibers coming off. See that long fiber? And then the large nucleus. Those are nerve cells that are supported by these little tiny dark dots in the background. We'll give some description to those in lecture, but for right now, just know the whole tissue as nervous tissue. And where do we find nervous tissue? Brain, spinal cord. That's where we find nervous tissue. So those nerve cells are called neurons, but you don't have to know, like I said, any of the detail within these tissues. Just look at the tissue and be able to name it. So it's nervous tissue, and the classification is nervous tissue. So in looking at our list then, which tissue is the most common in the body? Which type, which generic of the four classifications, which is the most common? Connective, connective tissue. Yep, so when in doubt, put connective tissue, right? So there's muscle tissue, nervous tissue, connective tissue, and epithelial tissue. Make sure you know that general classification, those four major classifications of tissues, because that could be a, a test question, is how would this tissue be classified according to type? So then you're going to choose epithelial, connective, nervous, or muscle. But if he says name this tissue, be specific, then you're going to name the specific type of tissue, like a real or a compact bone. Okay. Questions on that? No? Okay. Then the next part is looking at membranes of the body. So membranes are uh, modified tissues. This is on page 142 of your textbook. They're described. The first one is the cutaneous membrane. The cutaneous membrane is just our skin <coughs> or our integument. Integumentary system refers to the skin. We're going to talk about that in the second half of lab. 